there's a new invasive plant that you should know about and it's already causing problems. Japanese chaff flower can invade a wide range of habitats and it grows rapidly, crowds out native species. It spreads easily by its seeds that stick into fur and fabric. In this edition of Pesky Plants, we'll learn a little bit about Japanese chaff flower, what it is, how to identify it, and how to manage it. Japanese chaff flower is a perennial herbaceous plant. So it has an extensive root system and it sprouts up from that root system each year. It can get up to three to five feet tall, but it's gonna die back down in the fall. Its leaves are opposite and the margins are smooth. They don't have any kind of teeth or serrations, um, but they do have very prominent veins. You can see those veins, they almost make it look kind of like a dogwood or a, even a small basil plant. And the color of the leaves, of the stems can really vary. Uh, sometimes it's kind of reddish, sometimes it's more greenish. The stems are squarish and the nodes where those um, kind of small branches and leaves attach can be inflated and swollen. At those nodes, it's especially common for them to have this reddish color, but not always. Really, some of these features are easy to confuse with some other plants, especially in their, when they're small, but once they start to flower, they'll become more distinctive. So Japanese chaff flower will produce these bottle brush flowers. The flowers themselves aren't very noticeable. They're kind of small green, but they form this spike. Um, and when they're flowers, they're kind of in this small bottle brush spike, but as they mature and grow into seeds, that's gonna elongate and um, become kind of stretched out. And really important in the case of Japanese chaff flower and its spread, each of those seeds has attached to it these stiff bracts that attach it to fur and clothing, um, make it really easy to unintentionally carry around because it's stuck. Those bracts are located on the backs of the seeds, which distinguishes it from some other plants. And when, you know, late fall, winter comes, those leaves are gonna die back down but the stems with the seeds on them are going to remain through the fall and you're able to spread it that time of year, but it's also pretty distinctive in this kind of light, tan, almost yellowish color. As its name suggests, Japanese chaff flower is native to Asia, including parts of Japan. It was first detected in the United States in the 1980s in Kentucky, and since then it's spread all along the Ohio River. In Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, it is really abundant in those riparian areas right along the river, as well as in the floodplains nearby. So those seeds, when it floods, will be carried um, higher up into new areas. While it really likes moist soils and full sun or partial sun, um, it can also move into those more upland sites um, as well as slightly more shady locations. It can invade in your woodlands, in your bottomlands, in your stream sides, in your roadsides, in ditches, in gardens, in landscapes, in agriculture areas, um, all sorts of different areas. As with any invasive plant, managing Japanese chaff flower requires patience and persistence. Seeds are key to the establishment of Japanese chaff flower. While it's perennial, that's how it's arriving and those seeds are really easy to accidentally transport, either on yourself, animals, or equipment. So limit movement of um, people and uh, equipment in infested areas when it's producing seed. If you know that there's an infestation nearby, make sure that you check for establishment of those seedlings. It's a lot easier to control when you just have a few seedlings popping up compared to when it's taken over. And in addition to us moving it around, our pets moving it around, our equipment moving around, deer and other animals can also move it. Occasional small plants and seedlings can be pulled up by the root system, but the root system breaks off pretty easily and this is not going to be an effective strategy for larger plants. 
Mowing or cutting can be used to reduce that year's seed set, but plants can still produce seeds on the sprouts that pop up from that, and it's not gonna kill the plant. Herbicide is typically used to kill that entire root system, and it can be used in combination with something like uh, weed whacking or cutting, um, and then spraying the shoots that come up. There are lots of different herbicides out there that can be effective against Japanese chaff flower. And keep in mind that for those foliar sprays, you wanna do that when those plants are as small as possible to minimize the amount of herbicide you have to use. Um, and also that Japanese chaff flower likes to grow in areas, stream sides, riparian areas, uh, where you want to match the herbicide that you're using to those sensitive habitats. In addition, a lot of the places that chaff flower likes to grow, those stream sides, those edges, uh, a lot of other invasive plants can grow there too. So be on the lookout, not just for chaff flower, but that you have native plants filling in afterwards instead of invasives that you don't want to see. Thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about Japanese chaff flower. If you'd like to learn more, make sure to find us online and follow us on social media. Thanks for doing your part to fight these invasive plants and promote the health of your woodlands.